one. Hey, good evening and welcome to another edition of Angles and Attitude. And tonight we have the legendary Penny McReynolds, Chicago Sports List, Chicago Sports Hall of Famer. Kenny, welcome to Angles and Attitude. Been wanting to do this with you for a while and your name everywhere I go in the city, my man, is top notch. And uh, Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. I watch you guys all the time. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much. Kenny, I've been watching a lot of stuff on you, and I got to tell you something. I'm an old disco R&B guy. So back in the day, I used to listen to WVON, WGCI, and WBMX. And I used to love when you used to say, for WBMX Sports, this is Kenny McReynolds. And yeah, uh, Kenny, Kenny McReynolds, Mc BMX Sports. BMX Sports. I loved it. I loved it. But Kenny... The thing about you that is amazing, of course, growing up on the South Side, the projects, you were twice, 1976, 1980, in that Olympic run. But I think the downfall, you're telling me in a lot of interviews, was basketball, true? Well, uh, you know, baseball is my favorite sport. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I had to do it all over again, I probably would have stopped playing basketball, like one of my track coaches told me because I hurt my knee. And, but things happen and th things happen for a reason. I, the thing that I never, ever forget is the 1980 boycott of the Olympics because as a kid, I would have made that team. Probably the youngest player, person in the history right. to make that team. But then I kept playing basketball and it hurt my knee, but I have no regrets. Things happen for a reason. And I love basketball. I love baseball. I love track and field. And I think everything happens for a reason. So back in the day, when you had these wheels, you were basically compared to a veteran Maserati back in those days, correct? I mean, you could move. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could move. And i tell you a quick story. I never even thought about running track. Of course, playing sports, I knew I could, like, beat out balls in the infield or playing football. I was the fastest wide receiver. But I went to St. James Grammar School on 29th and Wabash. And I was coming to school one day, and this guy runs past me with a purse. And our school janitor is chasing him. And then he goes by me, and behind the school janitor is a nun. And I said, oh, let me see if I can catch the guy. So I passed the nun, I passed the janitor, I caught the guy, I jumped on his back, and, you know, held him until the janitor got the nun's purse back. And our, uh, the guy's name was Homer, our janitor. He said, you should run track. I said, oh, holy cow. Okay. I never thought about it. And I'll tell you something even more weird. A few years ago, I had my hip replacement. I had a hip replacement. And the doctors come to me and say, do you know you were born with deformed hips? I said, wow. I was born with deformed hips? So they showed me the x-ray that my hips are deformed. I said, well, how could I have a 42-inch vertical leap, run like I ran, play basketball, play sports? The doctor told me from birth, I got used to the pain. So I thought that was the way it was supposed to feel. So wow. I never realized it. So and this I is how asked, your body reacted to this, sure. Yeah, so I asked the doctor, wow. how fast could I have run if I had regular hips? He said, probably frightening. But wow. again, things happen for a reason. Sure, exactly. But basketball, what position did you play? Were you a guard point forward? Guard. Point, point guard. And uh, we're ta are we talking like high school years? I got a feeling me and you are the same age. I'm born in 60. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, down at Holy Name Cathedral. You know, I was yeah. down in Chicago in the state, and, uh, you know, I, I played the point guard position. And, again, I, I, I have no regrets about anything I've ever done. I always wanted to be involved in sports. And once my knees gave out and I've had these 19 knee operations, the best way to stay around sports is to get into coaching, get into broadcasting. And, of course, I scouted for 13 years uh, yes. with Orlando Magic, Charlotte Bobcats, and the Golden State Warriors while keeping my TV job. So, I've been around sports my entire life. I've never had a job my entire life. And I, I, I'm just a happy guy. I'm a happy-go-lucky yeah. person. And I love the way you put it. You, this is something you truly loved. You know, you, yes. you got into it. And I got to tell you, the story that hits home with me about you and your career is, you know, I tell my wife all the time, if I'm in a restaurant and I was Andre Dawson or if I was, you know, uh, any one of the Cubs or the White Sox, uh, if I'm in a restaurant and you came up to me, I'm going to sign that autograph. I loved your story. 
about Chet Kopic when you dialed 411 and Chet yeah. answered that call. It was, <laughs> I mean, that, that, and it was something during that whole roller derby thing. Yeah, and I, it's so funny you mentioned Andre Dawson because I'm sure you know he's my best friend. So, the guy, man. Yeah, he's my best friend. Yeah, I, I love the late, great Chet Kopic. Um, when I was inducted into the Chicago Land Sports Hall of Fame, of course, I was in the hospital at that day, so I couldn't go. Andre picked up the award for me, but Chet Kopic sat at my family table. And like I say, I watched the World Derby. I heard his voice on Channel 32 one day because he was the staff announcer. And I didn't know Roller Derby was phony. I thought it was real. But I, I, wanted, to know, I wanted to know how they did it on TV. So I just sure. dialed 32 and asked the Chet Kopic. He picked up the telephone. And I told him I wanted to see it. And he said, well, I'll leave you a pass. Ask for me. And I said, well, Chet, you know, we don't have a car. He said, well, I'll come pick you up. And he wow. came into the Ida B. Wells Housing Project, took me to the Hammond Civic Center, put me in a broadcast booth, put the headphones on me, and I fell in love with broadcasting ever since. And I tell you, I, I have nothing but love and respect for the late, great Chet Cop. Chet Cop, tremendous. And, you know, Kenny, he, he, like I said, I started this by saying, you know, you grew up on the South Side, the projects, everything. And the, and the more remarkable thing here, let's talk. I mean, you had the 43 surgeries, so many things of, that you've had to overcome. 44. 44. 44. 44. So I was, a, so we'll go with the Henry Aaron number. 44, <laughs> right? But uh, so many things you had to overcome and the way you did it. I mean, you have a passion. I mean, like I said, from the days when I listened to you at BMX and doing the sports. And I even remember the DePaul years. Just, I mean, just tremendous how you, you know, you, you did things. Um, did you, were you always dedicated, even as this young bo young guy, you know, growing up yeah. where you grew up from? Yeah, yeah, I, I have a tremendous drive because I don't like to lose. I, I, I do what I love to do, and I think you should give 100% in whatever you do. So, I mean, yeah, I grew up in Wentworth Gardens, a block and a half from Comiskey Park. Then we moved to Ida B. Wells on 39th Street. But, you know, so what? You know, was it games? Was it a lot of fights? Yeah, but that didn't manage to do nothing with me. It was more of what was inside the house. My mom with this with her fist than it was <laughs> on the outside of the house. You know, right, I right. You, I went to Catholic school my whole life. I never went to a public school, although we lived in a project. But yeah, I always had this drive. I always had this will to be um, to do what you want to do and to give a hundred percent. Now, you will never, ever, ever hear me say I'm the best. This. I'm the best that, but you will hear me say, I'll do the best that I can. Right. You know, I, I know some guys, say, oh, you know, I'm the best dresser. And one guy, oh, I'm the best in the business of this. And I'm the best, I got the best body. I'm the best. You know what? Hey, remember what Walter Payton said. When you're good at something, you tell people. When you're great at something, people tell you. Beautiful. And what well put by sweetness, number 34. Yeah. Good. Couldn't have made this, said it better, but it, it, you did so many things. I mean, and I, I feel like you had like a the swag about it. You did it confidently. Everything you did, it was like almost like a second nature for you. It wasn't like, you know, you had to get the manual out. Hey, that's Kenny McReynolds. He's doing well. I, I mean, I, I thank you for that compliment, but I work very hard at what I do. And sure. I, I work hard to make it look easy. So if it looks like I'm doing something hard on TV or an interview or uh, if I'm calling a college ba or high school basketball game, then I mean, I didn't do my homework and I, I failed. But if it looks easy, that means that I did a good job because I worked very hard to make it look easy. Like you yeah. do this show every week, you do your homework, you make it look easy. Right. But uh, people don't realize everything you did to put this show together, to make it look good. Right, and, exactly. Yeah. So I, I am, is it confidence? I don't know about confidence. I just do the best that I very can. And I'm going to always try to be well prepared in whatever I do. Um, yeah, even on Sports Edition, the last part of our show will be a CPS guest. So when our executive producer would tell me, here's your guest, some guys I know, some guys I don't know. So what do you do? You do your research. Now, exactly. It, Every guest I've had, and I've done over 1,000 sports editions, as you can see in the background, the jerseys that there they Ron are. Emanuel bought me on our 1,000 show. Everybody that's been on that show, I, I know everything about them. Um, right. Carl Weathers, 
who played Apollo Creed was yes. on my show. And, and he was I, in I the NFL. Yeah. And you know what? And I was telling him about the NFL, about the Raiders, and he loved that. And then I told him about his first acting job, which was my favorite Good Times, season two, episode 16, oh, February wow. 14th, 1976, as called The Nude, when JJ had to paint his wife. And I repeat to him his lines, every line he had. Wow. He's like, how did you know this? You know, this beats my time. This beats my time. I don't believe it. I don't <laughs> believe it. Yeah. Oh, talk. Then, you know, I mean, JJ, talk about you, being prepared. Talk yeah. about being prepared. You were prepared. And that yeah. even makes the interview with the guests, you know, phenomenal. I have to ask you, what time do we have right now? Because I'm without a clock. What time we got right now? You know? Oh, the time right now is 721. Okay, cool. Um, no, but a beautiful the way you, you put that because you've had some unbelievable guests. And, it's, and of course, the Prez. <laughs> you know, you had the Prez yeah. Obama on there. And you've had, I mean, athletes, everything. I got to ask you, this is a Kenny McReynolds, because here I'm a full-time travel agent on the Northwest side. So I love mm -hmm. doing this. I had always had a passion for sports. You know, I, I followed guys like you and G and Greco and all those guys. But does a Kenny get McReynolds as, you know, popular? And as, I'm using that word again, legendary as you are. Do you get the nose sometime, my friend? What do you mean? Meaning, do you get like, hey, I want to interview so-and-so, but he tells you, you know what, I'm not interested. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Lovey Smith would never do my show. Really? Uh, Bruce Weber, who's in Illinois, would never do my show. Okay. And guess what? Over a thousand shows, so somebody else did them. I've exactly. had the last three. I've had the last three sitting mayors on my show. Yes. You name me another sports talk show in studio. I had the right. last three, three city mayors on my show. Yeah, sometimes people say no, and, and that's fine. Like I say, I love you wouldn't do it. Uh, uh, Bruce Weber wouldn't do it. Um, and, and that's okay. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, you did a thousand uh, episodes with somebody yeah, else. Yeah, right? uh, Oliver Purdell, our former DePaul Blue Demon coach, he got the job. I offered him the entire show. I said, Coach, look, I'm going to give you the entire half hour. He turned his nose up at me and said, I'll see. You know, hey, I don't need you. I'm helping you out. And right. Jeannie Poncetto, the athletic director, told me, no, I'm going to make him come on the show. I said, no, I don't want him. I don't want anybody that does not want to be there. If Barack Obama, Michael Jordan, Horace yeah. Grant, the last three mayors, you know, Meryl Hodge, the, you know, Mike McCaskey came in. Right, I, right. If, if, these, if these guys can come in to do my show, they think I'd give a damn about Oliver Purnell? Yeah, I know, yeah, less. exactly. I think you took it to another level with all yeah. the guys that you just mentioned. You know, you took it to but, another you know, level. I will say this. I love every guest that has ever been on my show. Because sure. to me, the tennis player from Whitney Young High School is just as important as the mayor. Because exactly. they took the time out to be on my show. And if you take the time out to be on my show, you're very special to me. Exactly. No, well put. Yeah, and the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, this is a new thing starting out with me. And when I could get a guy like Kenny McReynolds for me or whoever, all the other ones we've had, we had George Castle on here the other night who gave you a huge compliment. on He did the Chili Dog MVP book about yeah. the one and only number 15, Dickie Allen on the side. My guy. Side. Your guy, I know. And we'll get to him too because I got a couple of questions to end this tonight for you about him and a few other guys. But when I when you answered the call and says, Hey, John, or the email, Hey, I would like to be on. I know you had seen the interview with Carrie Sayers really touched me because uh, my friend, I mean, you've done it all. I mean, you, and, and to me, you're so well-rounded and what makes me really look at you and say, wow, after all you've been through uh, from your beginnings to your surgeries, to you know, our ups and downs of everybody in our life, you, my friend, continue to just keep pounding that pavement and you do it so well so you got a little secret um positive attitude yeah john the easiest thing to do is to quit i mean you have to remember i woke up to the doctor pronouncing me dead right you know official time of death 1714 official date of death october 2nd and i opened my eye like who died <laughs> you know like, hey, who are you talking about who died you know um that's the day I got inducted into the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. 
And when Andre gave the speech, you know, he was very teary eyed. He didn't know if I was going to live or not. And I remember when my mother came from the banquet and she came into the room and saw how bad I was, she was just like, it was like Jackie Gleason in Honeymoon. <laughs> she couldn't say anything. She said, look, last time I left him, he was sick, but he wasn't like this. Right. And right. so I told her, come get me. I did like this. And I whispered in her ear, come give me a hug because it may be the last time you hugged me. Wow. Incredible but story. I, I kept saying that I didn't want to die. I, I, I had a positive attitude. I don't want to die. I'm not going to die. Let's get this fixed. And I was in the hospital 17 days. The easiest thing to do is to quit. Anybody can quit. Uh, I want to go down swinging. And sure. I also would like to mention, you know, people like Bruce Levine of the score. Yeah, he was in the hospital every day with me. He didn't have to do that. Those are friends of yours. Uh, Those are friends. You find out, yeah. You find out who your friends are when you're sick and when you're broke, let me tell you. And he, I've been both. Well, <laughs> but I mean, I had heard that story. Of course, I had listened to the podcast with George Hoffman. You did a great job with George on that uh, Tell Me a Story I Don't Know. And I was just like enthralled by the story. Because we got off to the late start due to my fault here tonight, I got to hit you with five things, and then I think I'm going to let you go. But I got to have a promise for you before I let these five eyeball things go that you will come back and we could do a longer show. Yeah, yeah. We had technical difficulties today. Yeah, but no, so, no. I want to come back and do a full show. I really do. Yeah, full show. But here I'm going to leave you with this. And okay. you can give me some one word answers, but I want those Kenny McReynolds to the hard answers. Your favorite White Sox moment, and it can't be the World Series. Opening day, 2022, okay. just passed, because they had a chance to hug my good buddy, Harold Baines. Oh, God, that was so I knew Baines. Baines made me keep a secret that he had the heart and the kidney transplant. I talked to him quite a bit during his illness. Baines is, is one of my closest friends, along with Andre. That was my favorite White Sox moment, not including the World Series, when we were up in the press box. If you saw my Facebook picture page, had a picture of me and him together. And I, I saw it. I saw it. I, yeah. A week or so That's, ago in the, on yeah. April 12th, I saw it. Yeah. Second question for you, because you've mentioned them many times. If the tragic thing wouldn't have happened, would Ben Wilson been another LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Would have been better. Okay. Okay. Love it. I love it. Beautiful. Uh, third question. Number 15, 1972, red sweatshirt. I don't care if it was 95 degrees or 30 below zero. He came up there with that 40 ounce bat. Does Dick Allen deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? No question about it. Now, when you look at his overall numbers, you can kind of understand why the writers didn't vote him in. But as right. far as the Veterans Committee, without question, he should be in the Hall of Fame. He yeah. was so dominant. And I tell you what, when he came on Sports Edition, and you saw the picture in, in the Chili Dog for his Sports Edition, I was like a kid at Christmas, and his wife <laughs> was like, I can't believe you know everything. I was wow. telling him about his El Producto commercials that he used to yes, do. Either El you Producto. got it or you don't. And, and his TV show on Channel 44. Yes, it's a travesty that four guys got in the Hall of Fame. And not Dick Allen. And, and I gotta tell you, that whole one vote thing really bothered me this last time. By one yeah. vote, you don't put Allen in. Crazy. John Kenneth, John Kenneth, question four. John Kenneth says the best right fielder in Cub history from 1896 to now, the best right fielder in Cub history is Andre Dawson. Does Kenny McReynolds agree with me? He's the best friend I have in life, of course. <laughs> yeah. Love hey, hey, you know what? Yeah, let me tell you. Quickly, he's a better person than he was a baseball player. And yes. he's an all-star baseball player. And I, I, I'll tell you quickly, because I know we're running late on time. When they downgraded me in a hospital from serious to critical, and it looked like I was going to die, my family called Andre and said, look, it doesn't look like you're going to make it. Andre was on a bicycle in a gym in Miami. He jumped off the bike, got in his car, and went right to the airport in T-shirts and his shorts to run to Chicago to be with me and said, I'll buy clothes when I get to Chicago. The, not only the best right fielder, one of the best people best you will person. ever, ever meet. Yes. Something's in my crawl and you're going to help me with it one day. Cause you, I think with you and the support of you and maybe me and some other people, we can get this done. There's a guy who played with Jerry Sloan, 
Bob Love, Chet Walker, Tommy Borwinkle, Clifford Ray, who should be having in his jersey hanging in the rafters. It's number two, Norman Van Leer. Do you think Norman's jersey by the Reinsdorfs should be retired? I think Chet Walker should be retired first. Yes. Then Norman Van Leer. Beautiful. Yes. Those two. Kenny, we are going to do a mission one day. We got to get this done because two and 25 should be in the rafter. They were yes. tremendous players. Tremendous players. Yes, I, I agree. I have to end it with this. Kenny, uh, you got to come back. I hope we get you. I want to get you back here yeah. in a month from now. and do the hour long with you if we can. Yeah. And I got to tell yeah. you, you are truly a Chicago legend, Chicago Sports Hall of Fame. Kenny McReynolds, I don't know how to thank you for tonight. This was fantastic. Well, I don't know how to thank you enough for inviting me. It was a pleasure to be here. I'm sorry we had the technical difficulty. We didn't get on right away, but, but I guarantee you, I will come back. I want to come back. We'll do the entire hour. Uh, I'm not a legend. That means I'm getting old. I'm just a guy having fun, doing what he loves to do. And you're doing thank it you great, so my much. man. You're doing it great. And from, as Sammy Davis Jr. would say, from the bottom, I truly thank you. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.